Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's talk about Manny Pacquiao against Chris Algieri. Now let me just say there's a video that I want you to watch. I believe it's highly relevant to this fight. Believe it or not, Chris Algieri has been making videos here online in which he has been giving advice to fighters, right? And Algieri is such a low-key guy, right? I admire the man, even though I thought he lost to Richelin Provodnikov, but Algieri is such a low-key guy that even though he's a world-class professional fighter fighting people like Richelin Provodnikov, he calls himself here online champion lifestyle. Right? And in the video, which is entitled, How to Deal with a Southpaw, Algeria goes through strategies that an Orthodox fighter can use for dealing with a Southpaw. Right? It's in my favorites here online. I encourage you to look at it because you'll see what Algeria believes matters against Southpaws. What I believe, too, is what you'll see is that that strategy won't work, in my opinion, against Manny Pacquiao. Right? I like Manny Pacquiao over Chris Algieri. Here's the reason why. The big reason is simply because Manny Pacquiao is lightning quick and doesn't have to stay in the pocket. The problem with fighting Manny Pacquiao, a southpaw, is that it's hard to get a read on Pacquiao's feet. He's not stationary enough for you to do so. You're also dealing with not just major speed, but major power. That straight left is one of boxing's best punches. Right, so in the video, you're going to see that Algeria talks about how you should be able to land a straight right hand against the southpaw based on the stances. Right, understand there's a corollary to that. If you're a southpaw facing a righty, you should be able to land a straight left hand on that righty. So I think Pacquiao is just going to be too much for Algieri. I don't think Algieri, who fought Provotnikov at Light Welter, and who will be facing Manny Pacquiao at Welter, I don't think Algieri is prepared for this fast a puncher who can frame his punches much better than Rishlin Provotnikov. Understand, there's a part to Pacquiao's game where you have to find him. Right? If you look through Pacquiao's history, I'll agree, Pacquiao hasn't been stopping guys of late. But if you look through his history, the reason why leaps out at you. It might surprise many of you to know that of Manny Pacquiao's last five fights, five fights, four of them have been against Juan Manuel Marquez and Timothy Bradley. Understand Marquez and Bradley are hard to knock out as it is. They're also Pacquiao's size and these are guys willing to stay in the pocket. Bradley's a switch. Bradley can be outside the pocket or in the pocket. But these guys are comfortable counterpunching you 
in the pocket. Pacquiao is not. Right? So these matchups are tough matchups for Manny Pacquiao. Right? Styles make fights. Bradley, when he's not throwing caution to the wind in the rematch after looking good in the first round, and Marquez, when he's being methodical, baiting Pacquiao in and countering him and showing superior countering skills, are two of the hardest matchups in the sport for Manny Pacquiao. Let me point out the obvious. Another one would be, obviously, Floyd Mayweather. Right? Guys who, in the pocket, know how to neutralize speed and can counter you will give Pacquiao a hard time. But, let me say this, Pacquiao does better against taller fighters, right? Remember the Antonio Margarito fight, remember the Oscar De La Hoya fight, when a tall guy, and Algeri's 5'10", has to actually bend over and try to find Manny Pacquiao, that gives Pacquiao, who has great legs, by the way, both Algieri and Manny Pacquiao have great legs, but that gives Pacquiao, who has the harder punch than Algieri, right? Algieri only has a 40% KO ratio, right? That gives Pacquiao the opportunity to throw power shots from distance as he's moving, as Algeria's trying to figure out his feet, right? And it gives Pacquiao the opportunity to duck away from punches. He didn't have that capability against the shorter guys, Marquez and Timothy Bradley, right? So I believe that Algeria's YouTube video, How to Deal with a Southpaw, is great advice. When you're dealing with a southpaw who's right in front of you who doesn't hit as hard as Manny Pacquiao. I don't believe the advice holds when you're dealing with a mobile southpaw who's going to be outside of the pocket and who's only going to come into the pocket momentarily to deliver big shots. Right? You'll notice in the Algeri video, he talks about a straight right hand. He doesn't mention too much a straight left hand. Isn't the straight left hand going to be the most important punch in a fight against Manny Pacquiao? Let me say, too, the Richland Provotnikov fight, and again, I'm among those who believe that Provotnikov defended his title. But in that fight, you knew Provodnikov was going to be up on Algeri. Now, early in that fight, Algeri had a hard time figuring out the angles. He gets decked twice in that fight early on. Figuring out the angles is even harder against Manny Pacquiao. Because Pacquiao, unlike Provodnikov, who is coming in on you, Pacquiao's all over the place. Pacquiao's also playing games with the rhythm of the fight, right? Provodnikov's coming in like this. Provodnikov's kind of like a Mike Tyson type. Manny Pacquiao's moving his head. Watch Pacquiao. He's always going like this. Then he's throwing punches mid-cadence, right? So, Count me among those who believes this is too much too soon for Chris Algieri. The guys Algieri fought right before fighting, Ruslan Provodnikov, guys like Emmanuel Taylor, who's had his problems in other fights, guys like Mike Arnunas, these guys aren't exactly Juan Manuel Marquez and Timothy Bradley. The guys who Manny Pacquiao has been fighting. Right? I would make the argument that Pacquiao has fought the vastly tougher competition. Right? Also understand, Manny Pacquiao is a guy who has fought all over the world. 
right? Pacquiao has fought in Madison Square Garden. Pacquiao has fought in Las Vegas. Pacquiao has fought in Macau, right? Chris Algieri was fighting at the Paramount Theater in Huntington, New York, not too far from where he lives. Then he fought at the Barclays Center, right, against Ruslan Povatnikov. The Pacquiao fight is going to be a fight on a level that Chris Algieri hasn't experienced. Understand, at the Barclays Center, that was an Algieri crowd. I know the promoters were hoping to have a lot of Brighton Beach Russian folks at the fight to support Ruslan Provotnikov. But as you watch that fight, you'll notice the fight is an Algeri crowd. Now, I've said this in prior videos. I think it's a bigger factor in boxing than any of us realize. When you're fighting a fighter who has a charisma gap on you, right? When you're fighting a Ray Leonard or an Oscar De La Hoya in their heydays, right, and Ali, and you haven't been in big events where the crowd, much of the crowd, is rooting for the other guy, and where the judges are more familiar with the other guy. Judicial familiarity seems to play a big role in boxing. When the judges know the other guy's style more, and will be lulled into the pattern of voting for the other guy if the other guy just brings his regular game then you sir are behind the eight ball I believe that's where Chris Algieri is gonna find himself against Manny Pacquiao understand whatever we think about Manny Pacquiao whatever the pay-per-view numbers are on Manny Pacquiao fights. I need for people to realize that Manny Pacquiao is loved. Right? Very few guys are loved like Manny Pacquiao. Saul Alvarez seems to be the only other person in boxing right now. Right? When I say loved, I mean I'm talking about a rock star. I'm talking about someone who you show up to the fight to root for, not against. I believe that's different than the crowd reaction to, let's say, Adrian Broner and Floyd Mayweather. Right? Manny Pacquiao's coming in as if he's John Wayne. Think about Pacquiao losses for a second. Right? The Timothy Bradley fight, the crowd, you know, let's just say that when Manny Pacquiao loses, you can sense the disappointment in the crowd. There's no David versus Goliath dynamic for Manny Pacquiao fights. You don't show up and view Pacquiao as Goliath. You always view him as David. Even against fighters like Chris Algieri, who, you know, hasn't gotten the riches or the adulation that Manny Pacquiao has gotten, right? It's an interesting dynamic in boxing. Certain guys, you know, obviously I feel Canelo lost to Erislandi Lara, right? Certain guys, Canelo, Pacquiao are so loved by fans that the fans almost treat these guys as if they're their children. Right? So Chris Algieri, a guy with a less than 50% KO ratio, a guy with a speed deficit against Manny Pacquiao, a guy with a power deficit against Manny Pacquiao, understand? Pacquiao straight left is the best punch in this fight. Understand, Chris Algieri only has something like eight knockouts. He has less than ten knockouts in his career. Understand, 
Manny Pacquiao has fought the bigger men between these two. Not just the guys with the better resumes, but the physically bigger men. Manny Pacquiao, when he beat Margarito, was the champion at 154 pounds. Look at Chris Algieri's record. Even though Algieri has had a few fights at welterweight, they're barely at welterweight. They're 141, 142, 143. So given all the advantages Manny Pacquiao has, perhaps the biggest advantage is going to be the charisma gap. I think Algieri, who's been fighting before hometown fans in upstate, excuse me, in New York State, right? I believe Algeria is going to be so stumped to fight a world-class fighter who's this popular, who's this charismatic. So while you're dealing with Pacquiao's talent, the hand speed, the fast feet, the feet you can't read. In other words, what fast feet means is you're thinking, okay, I got to get my foot outside Manny Pacquiao's foot. But Manny Pacquiao's foot's not in your area code. Suddenly, here's Manny Pacquiao. He's right here. He jumps in on you. Before you know it, you're getting put to sleep with a straight left hand. Right? Understand, the Marquezes of the world are able to analyze, compute, dissect, a lot of information stay calm and know what to do so in Marquez's world Manny Pacquiao's speed outside when he comes in it's like a slow-motion movie Marquez has planned it Marquez is setting traps so when Manny Pacquiao comes in Marquez is calm he's not panicked he has the right counter all set up. He's not afraid to throw that right counter right before Manny Pacquiao gets off his straight left. Timothy Bradley's world. Understand, Bradley can bend at the waist and plays angles. Right? In some ways, to me, Bradley's more complex than Marquez. Understand, though, Bradley also, when he doesn't have two sprained ankles, can move with Pacquiao. So Manny Pacquiao's out here moving around. Then when Pacquiao comes in, Bradley's able to jump back. Right? And understand it all lines up. Because Bradley's the same height as Pacquiao. So when Bradley throws a jab back, he's throwing it straight. Now Chris Algieri. He's going to be dealing with speed he hasn't seen. Certainly, he didn't get anything remotely resembling Manny Pacquiao's speed in the Richland Provotnikov fight. Right? Foot speed and hand speed. So, in my opinion, there's a chance that he'll be a deer caught in headlights. That he'll hop in the ring, the crowd's going to be a Pacquiao's crowd. He's going to be going up against a rock star. Then Pacquiao's going to be moving fast. You're going to know there's a threat of real violence behind the movement. Then Pacquiao, the first time he fought, Juan Manuel Marquez, knock him down three times in the first round. Didn't you think Man Ricky Hatton had a great chin before he fought Manny Pacquiao? You remember how that first round went. Right? These guys show up, Pacquiao starts jumping around, the crowd's cheering in the background, you can't read the movement, there's no feet planted that you can read, he's not in front of you, the angles are illusory because he's always moving around the ring. Then he comes in, if you're a taller guy, if you're going to throw a jab, you have to reach down to throw the jab on Pacquiao. Pacquiao's bending at the waist and he's going like this. Right? Fighters like Marquez and Bradley can handle it and stay competitive. 
Let's just say the odds are against Chris Algieri here. If this were a rematch and Algieri has already seen the angles, that'd be one thing. This is his first fight against Manny Pacquiao. Good luck. I like Manny Pacquiao in this fight. I like Pacquiao to win. Right? I think Pacquiao has a chance at a stoppage. The way I'd play it would be Pacquiao to win. But I would throw a little kicker to increase my rate of return on Pacquiao by KO. But understand the risk involved, right? Both halves of the bet blew up on me on the Arislandi Lara Canelo fight. If Chris Algieri wins this fight, and it's possible, Pacquiao hasn't had a KO for a long time. Algieri is several years younger than Manny Pacquiao, who's 35, right? Algieri is a relatively unknown commodity, right? Even great fighters are unknown at times in their career. If Chris Algieri wins this fight, you lose it all, right? So, understand the risk involved. But I believe Pacquiao is a different level. I thought Algieri had a problem figuring out the angles against Wishman Povotnikov, who's easier to read than Manny Pacquiao. I think speed kills. I think Pacquiao's feet, his footwork, is going to pose more of a problem for Algieri than Algieri's excellent feet are going to pose for Manny Pacquiao. I think the punch in this fight is going to be a straight left hand. I like Manny Pacquiao to win this one, and I'm going to add a little kicker of Pacquiao by KO. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.